Around half the air you breathe in most modern commercial jets is recycled. It just goes round and round and round the cabin. The other half, though, is drawn through here, the engines. Now, normally, that's not a problem. But if there's a fault in the seal of these engines, that's where some people think engine oil and other toxic fumes could be sucked up from here into the cabin itself. Airlines say fume events are very rare but we've obtained full safety reports submitted to the regulator, the CAA. Since April last year, there have been 251 reports of fumes on flights operated by British Airlines. In 104 of those cases, an illness was reported. Oxygen was given on at least 28 of those flights. The detailed logs, which have not been made public until now, show some pilots were made so sick they couldn't operate. On other flights, every crew member was sent to hospital. April 13th, 2015, Airbus A320 Heathrow. Oily smell in the cockpit intensified post-landing. At a and &E, crew reported feeling things felt unreal and slightly confusing. Both pilots were considered unfit to operate. February 29th, 2015, Boeing 747. Fumes in the cabin. During the cruise, the senior crew manager informed the captain that nine cabin crew were now reporting similar symptoms. These consisted of dizziness, nausea and headaches. One cabin crew member collapsed and was administered first aid and oxygen. Former stewardess Dee Passens was made redundant after a long sickness she blames on contaminated air. You think it's jet lag or um, it's just getting older and you don't realise that actually until your body completely breaks down and grinds to a halt, you don't realise that you're ill. You just keep putting it down to other things. Campaigners are now waiting for the outcome of two high-profile inquests. Richard Westgate and Matthew Bass both worked for British Airways. Both died after long illnesses, which their families blame on toxic fumes. The Unite Union, which represents cabin crew, has opened a dedicated legal unit and is preparing 17 more cases against airlines in the civil courts. Plane makers and airlines themselves say there is no proof of any long-term health effects from breathing cabin air. In 2013, a group of independent scientists reviewed the evidence for the Department of Transport. The levels were often as low or even lower than those in the home or in the workplace. This is in normal flight. Of course, we can't be sure what the levels are in so-called fume events, which are very rare. But lawyers working in this area are now comparing toxic air to other industrial health scares. If you look at the tobacco industry, the asbestos, contaminated blood issues, uh, if you look at all that, government say it's perfectly safe, perfectly safe, and then wham, suddenly they have to admit we got it wrong for so many years. So that's going to happen again with aerotoxic, no doubt about it. Is the air we breathe at 30,000 feet a genuine threat to staff and paying passengers? That's likely to be decided one way or another in our courts in the months and years to come.